Okay, welcome back to our third session of our TISA discussion this week. Um, I'm a new face <laughs> because last week and the week before, Professor Christoph Mauch, Director of the Rachel Carson Center, uh, moderated the sessions. Today I'm moderating and next week I will be moderating. My name is Gisa Lüdecke. I'm the Director of Graduate Programs here at the Rachel Carson Center. And I'm very delighted that we could win Dr. Kai Sosseda today um, as a speaker for our Tuesday discussion. In the last two sessions, we had two very different approaches to um, the idea or to, to raise climate awareness. In our first session, uh, you remember we had um, a climate activist from Russia who spoke about his work. In the session last week, we had a group of artists and academics who actually introduced us to their um, exhibition, which is still, I think, Christoph displayed downstairs at the KHG for the next one or two weeks. It's an, an exhibition about the human environment, uh, human nature relationship. Uh, it's beautiful, so if you haven't seen it yet, I can only recommend going there in the next few days. Um, and today we're going to have a totally different topic again. It's about uh, science and about maybe political work, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I would say. I can say so. Because you basically uh, bring two or combine two big fields. Uh, because Kai Sosseda, he is a hydrogeologist working at the Technical University um, and heading the group Geothermal Energy. So I don't know if you know that Munich is a very special place in Germany where we're basically standing on hot ground. So there's a lot of heat beneath our feet, which can, like in Iceland, be turned into renewable energy. And uh, this concept is already around in Munich and people have been working on this for decades, but it's still not where, there where it could be. So <laughs> Kai is one person working and researching on this topic. This is one part. And the other part is that he has a very, I would say like activistic life. He is a member of several uh, nonprofit organizations, a supporting member. He is, as you can tell by his button here on, the, on his uh, shirt, that he's uh, one of the earliest members of Scientists for Future, the movement uh, in Munich. And he is also a member of the recently founded Klimarat München, the Climate Council, that was founded in 2020, right after Corona. Yeah, it's 2021, I guess. 2021, okay. <laughs> so in the middle of Corona, um, Perfect timing, and this uh, is something that is um, quite new to, Mun to Munich because this climate council reports directly to the city council. So it actually helps um, politicians to make decisions, hopefully good hopefully. decisions, towards climate protection and climate adaptation. And this is something that we will hear about today, so about your work uh, as a, uh, with, with your uh, geothermal energy group and how you bring your knowledge into this Climate Council and then how far the Climate Council can actually make a difference towards climate protection. Because um, Munich as a city is, I think, supposed to be climate neutral by 2035, yes. which is not that much time to go, so no. we'll see what the Climate Council can do here. It's a pleasure having you here, Kai, you. and um, I leave the stage to you, and everyone, please help me welcoming Kai. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's nice to be here. So I have two roads today. That, that's quite, um, yeah, very hot for me. Normally I'm talking about geothermal energy and needs at least two hours for really talking the basics. So I tried just to give you an impulse about that, also an impulse about geothermal energy, what we do in Munich, and also an impulse about what is the Climate Council. I start with the last one, with the Climate Council. Because, um, uh, as already said, I'm a part of the uh, a member of the Climate Council, which was founded in 2022, uh, 21. So we can go there, yeah, here. So a climate uh, Munich actually announced the climate neutrality uh, until 2035. So, which is very very uh, soon, and so it is quite really, um, yeah, a very ambitious game. I uh, aim, sorry. So it's established of the uh, Climate Council mid of 2021 and we start with the work immediately in November. So what, what happened is actually that the city of Munich they had some decisions and they, they want to make some fundamental decisions about climate politics in the next, uh, for the next years. Actually there was a decision about for the next three years 
a decision in the city government means money, actually. So how much money should they spend in the next uh, climate measurements for the next three years? That was the decision. And for this decision, we had to do a, a report, a statement. What do we think? What is right? And what is maybe should be improved? So we really start with, with this work. And that was, um, yeah. Um, that was really hard work, I have to say. So the Climate Council is about 16 expert members. Uh, so it is distinguished in two people from administration. So they're coming from the city government and five city council. So some five politicians, actually. So there are five, seven, seven people from the city itself. And then three scientists, three economists and three people from the civil society. So, and uh, maybe you think it looks like that, but actually it looks really like that. So it's really polit political work. It is uh, sitting together with the government and discussing about uh, city politics. <clears throat> I'm actually one member, not from the scientists, I'm from the civil society, because, uh, due, because of my work in the uh, for the Scientists for Future. Actually, there is a community in, in the city of Munich, a lot of people who are working in different topics, different NGOs, and so we are discussing a lot in, in, yeah, in different rounds. And then there is a, a sort of an election, and then yeah, three people from the civil society were elected, and one, one of them were me, actually. So... <coughs> Um, what is the task of the Climate Council? The Climate Council, here this is the original text. Uh, the Climate Council comment fundamental decisions of the city government and support the city as critical constructive companion of the city's climate protection politics to reach the climate goals. So very, very, uh, in a political way we have to work and we just comment, and I want to underline that, yeah, the fundamental decisions. So we are not making some decisions, we just give a, a, a report or just give advice what they should do. So uh, the second task is support the communication between general public, scientists, politics, administration and so on. And this was quite an um, interesting point because the civil society actually expected that there is an open discussion on every point now. And for the city government, it is like that, that they want to discuss with the Climate Council and with nobody else, I have to say, something like that. So um, what, they, what the civil society expected from the Climate uh, Council and from the climate politics and, and what the city government expected, that was a little bit different, I have to say. So <clears throat> what is our work in the Climate Council? Normally it is really... We do some comments on drafts for fundamental decisions and the, these comments and statements were added then to the proposed resolution before the decision and so the politics can see what we, what we think about the topic, what should be improved and then make the decision based on these statements. I have to say to every proposed resolution, there are several statements. It's not only from the Climate uh, Council, there are statements from economics, from uh, whatever, whatever you can imagine. Every organization which are actually touched by this topic can do a statement. So, and this is then also added. So a lot of statements you have to go through and then see what happens. <coughs> so, and this is also that the Climate Council is not like uh, they have to consider it, no, they can consider it. So it is just an advice yeah, um, for them. So we have eight annual meetings are foreseen, but in general they are more than that, which is good, um, because if a fundam fundamental decision um, uh, will come, then actually they say, okay, then we have a meeting and discuss about it. So last year, I think we have 12 meetings, something like that, which is quite a lot. <clears throat> so that's the role in 
or my role in the Climate Council, and we can discuss later on about that and about the expectations from the general public, from the government, and so on about this, um, yeah, this advisory board, I would say. And uh, I know a lot of other climate councils in Germany, and they are all different. And this is also what is, this is not really a way of doing a climate council. Every city has the, the own uh, expectations or own strategy to do it. For Munich, it is very important to have that because the, especially the Green Party, they promised to do it. And so now they have it and we have to see uh, to fill it with life, actually. We are, we are working, yeah, I forgot that, um, in more or less six groups, in six so-called focus groups. There's a heat code and electricity, municipal real estate, adaption, participation and lifestyle, mobility and economy. Why we do it like that? Of course, these are actually the, the different fields uh, where we can do something. This is also very important for municipalities because what we have to decide is what is or what can a municipality do? Because a lot of decisions are at a state level and at, at the, yeah, so they're not on the municipality level. So we have to, de to think about what really can a municipality do and what, how can we engage the municipality to do the right thing. And for example, in the in the part in the focus group of participation and lifestyle, it is um, they do not have really um, how to say they cannot do something. The municipality itself, it's just they can uh, put some support, or uh, but they have no real. Uh, they cannot set up a law or something like that in this in this direction. They can support. They can finance some activities but uh, they cannot change a lot. This is what the government thinks. Other people think different, I have to say. <coughs> okay, so why is, yeah, come back. So heat, cold and electricity, this focus group I'm working uh, very hard in that one, because this is of course my topic, uh, renewable energy and the heating sector itself. And the heating sector is one of the main sector a municipality can do something. Because for heating, the municipality is responsible. They can actually put in place a district heating network. They can put in place some measurements for changing the heating behavior uh, in, 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 uh, in their real estate and so on. So they have really a high field of activity in that. So some facts about Munich, uh, you should know, um, of course, the inhabitants and so on, you already know, I guess. Uh, but then, uh, the primary energy consumption for heating, this is maybe, if, you, if you're not uh, familiar with that numbers, it is a large number, a really large number, 21 terawatt hours per year. So, <coughs> and this is covered by about 60% of fossil gas. Still now, uh, and uh, it is uh, it have yeah, about 34 percent of district heating, and 10 percent something like that about oil. But that's a, the the current situation about the heating market in in, in Munich. <coughs> and what have to, so what is uh, why it is so important? Because of course, uh, heating is really a big CO2 uh, emitted. So about 30 percent of CO2 emissions in Bavaria and in Germany are produced by the building sector. Though it's a, a, a large number of emissions. And you know maybe so uh, three or four of the energy in a household is used for heating and, uh, and hot water in the household. So it is a lot what we can do by um, changing our heating behavior, changing the heating systems to go in the, in the right direction for uh, saving CO2 emissions. So the heating energy demand in general, so only for heating every German emits 1.38 tons CO2 per year. And this is quite a lot. You may know 
how much uh, a single person should emit in a year. Do you know that we are on the safe side? How much is it? How much tons CO2 per year you as a personal, you as person can emit? 11 tons, 10 tons, more. Ralph, you should know. <laughs> it's less than that. Yeah, it's less than that. So it's a two to three tons. So if you say it's just two to three tons for a person emit CO2 in a year and we use 1.83 just for heating, that's almost, almost everything what we have. So you should not eat then and should not travel and so on. Is that only per household or is it like <coughs> also when I go to the shopping mall and the shopping mall is heated, it also counts into my... Uh, no, that's all together actually. And so there are a part you can do on your own and there's a part the general public or the in general we should change the heating system. Yeah. So that's all together just for heating. Okay, so uh, heat transition is a key issue for um, going, going in the right direction by um, reaching the climate goals. So and this is my role in, also in the Climate Council and this is my role also in the research and I'm uh, quite very active in this heat transition in Munich. So what Munich is doing, uh, they do um, municipality energy planning and this is uh, this becomes mandatory for all municipalities in Germany. It's not in, in place now, but it's, I think the law will come this year. So every municipality has to do an energy plan and show how can we reach the transition. <coughs> and uh, I'm working in this energy plan. Munich is working on such a plan. The Climate Council asked for it. And there is a report uh, where actually um, is described um, how the how Munich can reach the climate goals, and for that there is uh, written that an energy plan is mandatory for the city of Munich. And for heating, this plan should uh, be published this year. So a lot of people working on on that. How we can do that? And I'll show you a few slides about how we can do that really and what is the potential for Munich to reach this energy transition. <coughs> First of all, there are a lot of reports and studies and a lot of think tanks actually thought about how can we do this transition in the heating market. How can we get rid of the fossil fuels and how can we change it to a renewable energy. And this is a quite old study, but it's nothing changed actually. This is from the Environmental Agency of Germany. And there are a lot of similar uh, studies, uh, Agora, Think Tank, EFOI, and so on. So what we see is we have a lot of fossil fuels. I think the, the, the colors are not very good, but anyway. So these are a lot of fossil fuels. And the first one you have to, uh, to uh, what, what I have to mention is, that we should save energy about to 60%. What does it mean in the building sector? In the building sector means we have to use a less energy for heating in the buildings. So we have to do a lot of um, restoration and all that stuff. Yeah, so this is a, a big issue. This is also why we have so much money and so much funds and incentives for, uh, for restoration of the buildings and so on. <coughs> Insulation and all that stuff. And what is actually, um, what we have in 20, 2050, so this is then a clean uh, heating, uh, then we have just two, two parts of heating. And this one is a district heating and this is heat pumps. And you know the discussion about heat pumps, I think this is quite very, very recent. And uh, so heat pumps and district heating. And the district heating must be also green, so it must be clean. These are the two things. And why we have these two things is we have a central system and we have a decentral system. The decentral system is heat pumps and the central system is a district heating network. 
so coming to geothermal energy. Just a few slides about geothermal energy. Geothermal energy, uh, this is the potential Munich has. Yeah, so we have a lot of geothermal energy potential and we should use that, especially to decarbonize our district heating system. Geothermal energy, just in, in a very, very uh, few words, we have heat which is stored in the middle of the earth because of the earth's origin. Uh, a lot of compaction and uh, material actually uh, crashes into the earth, so of course a lot of energy is stored here. And uh, this is one part where we, because of course you know the heat core is very hot and the heat actually transfers to the outside. This is one part. The other part is we have some material in rocks uh, which are then uh, have a radioactive decay and radioactive decay about uh, coming from thorium, uh, uranium, potassium uh, and so uh, they produce heat as well and quite a lot of heat so it is 70% of the stored energy in, in, the, in the use is coming from this process and 30% from that one. In general, but of course, we have a heat which we can use in the underground. That's the main message. So, um, just here, a temperature profile. So, if you are going deeper to the Earth, of course, it's getting warmer. And that's, so we have a geothermal flux which comes here. And the other part is this, the solar uh, entry, actually, we have energy coming to the surface, to the Earth's surface, and this is also stored in the upper part of the Earth. So we have two processes where we, can, where we have stored energy, which we can use for heating, of course. Uh, there are several um, parts in Germany which, uh, where we say we have a big potential uh, for geothermal. This is the northern um, basin, north German basin, so over uh, the, the Rheingraven and the South Molas Basin, and we are here, so we have a big potential. Um, how we can use geothermal energy? We just, what we need is, we need, I, I just want to highlight that one, a hydrothermal system. This is what we, what we use in, in Munich. What we need is, we need um, a carrier media which carries the heat, and that's water. Water has a really good, um, uh, good, uh, uh, heat storage, so it can really store the heat quite very well. So we use this water and pump it, pump it to um, to the surface, and then extract the heat and pump it back because we don't want to change the volume uh, in the underground, the water volume in the underground. We just want to use the heat, and this is what we do in in Munich. <coughs> and why do we have good conditions? Because we have here in blue one line which has carry a lot of water. So this is a, a, a rock layer which carries a lot of water. It's very porous. So that's very good for us. And then it's deepen here through the Alps. So it carries a lot of water and then it goes deeper and deeper. And um, in the Munich area, it has a temperature because it goes deeper and then the temperature increases. So we have a good temperature for heating under, under Munich, so 80 to 100, 120 degrees, and there, there we can use it. In north of Munich, so in area of Augsburg or so, the same water would have a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. That's not enough for heating, so we are not using it so far. <coughs> but here in the area of Munich, we have really a good potential. And this is how we use it, actually, just Dig, um, a dig into this section and then pump the water out and go to a heat exchanger and then heat the, heat the um, buildings with that. Uh, these are the temperature maps. What we have in this, uh, in this layer, you see we have here uh, 100, 140, 120 degrees and in the northern part of Munich we have uh, a lower temperature about 80 degrees, something like that. There's a lot of geothermal systems here. I just show you. This is Munich. We have a lot of in place, and this is what we what we want to do. A transition. Here you see the district heating network of Munich, and here are the geothermal plants and what is the vision 
of uh, the Stadtwerke München, for example, that we have a, a, an, um, a district heating network just driven by geothermal until 2035. So this is what we do. So we, we have to implement a lot of more geothermal plants. At the moment we have five to six. And also what we need is, and this is also a political um, discussion, we need the heat from the suburban. Yeah, so outside from Munich we have to deliver to build geothermal plants outside of Munich and then deliver the heat to Munich, like we do with water, with the drinking water as well. So that's the same strategy. Uh, then to decarbonize the whole district heating network. Okay, so I can tell you a lot more because also about the decentral system, but we're running out of time. So I want to stop here. We can discuss a lot more. I have 100 more slides, so no problem. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's for my impulse, I think. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much.